everyone, and welcome to another amazing Adobe Live here at behance.net slash Adobe Live. I'm your, I'm your host, Tony Harmer, I can't read. And I'm joined today by our fab guest, Raquel Costa, who's going to be amazing us with her mad fresco skills. Hi, Raquel, how are you doing? Hi, Tony. I'm doing great. I'm, I'm really happy to be here with you guys today. So thank you once again uh, for having me. Thank you, Adobe. We and, are uh, loving seeing you here. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. And I hope uh, everyone who's watching has a good time as well. Yes, I think I'm sure they will. Mm -hmm. Right, I'm going to go a bit more normal now. So if you're joining us or watching <laughs> on YouTube, that's not, the, uh, that's not really where you need to be. Get across to behearts.net where you can join us and chat away with our fabulous community, some of whom I'm going to say hello to right now. So hi, Andres, guten tag. How are you doing? Hi, Annika. Hi, Gareth. Hi, Oliver. Hi, Sean. Guten tag to you also. And uh, yeah, all of our usual ones are here. Everyone's in and that's really good. So, okay, Raquel, all silliness aside, we were having a little bit of a chuckle just in the green room beforehand <laughs> about starting the stream with a relaxing Wednesday groove. And um, yeah, just having good laughs. So, Raquel, you were you were on the stream a while back doing mm -hmm. uh, Starla's character work, which I think you're going to build on some of that stuff today, right? That's that's the plan. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. And just for um, mm -hmm. anybody who's who's not who didn't see the previous stream, which you can watch by the way on demand, um, just uh, if you wouldn't mind just introing yourself, tell people who you are or what you do. Of course, I, I'd be delighted. So for, for anyone who hasn't um, met me yet, I'm, I'm Raquel. I'm an artist and illustrator from Portugal. Um, and uh, I've been working mostly either in children's books illustration, also editorial illustration for newspapers and magazines, uh, doing also some visual development for animation, advertising, and I'm still not done because I have, <laughs> I'm a co-founder of a, of a small uh, a design studio where we yep. work mostly with branding and brand management projects um, where where uh, we also uh, go into a little bit of uh, like um, interior design branding type of, of interventions with some clients and last but not least I'm I'm also a teacher in, at the university here in Portugal I'm teaching yeah. digital illustration at the moment so uh yeah i'm kind of uh doing all kinds of things and um yep. for for anyone who hasn't um well not 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 really not what i want to say what i want to say is for anyone who has uh, seen my work and has visited my 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 social media platforms my seen my portfolio uh you'll probably notice that there is some diversity in terms of uh, of the work that i do i have uh, different approaches in terms of visual languages that is because uh since i'm working in so many different areas i always try to find the specific visual language that best fits any project. Of course, uh, when I'm working for children's uh, illustration, it, it's got to be uh, different from what I do when I'm working on a on a more complex theme for for a let's say a newspaper or magazine article. And I did um, I did uh, uh, work a, a, a little. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm nervous. I don't know why. Oh, don't be nervous. It's okay. It's, be, it's me. I've relaxed you too much, isn't it? Yes. You're, you're yeah. like kind of, you're, you're back in the chair. <laughs> oh my God. I, I, I wasn't prepared for, for having such a, such an amazing intro. And I, <laughs> I'm just babbling and, and, and doubting. No, no, no. So, it's all good. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no, we're all um, good. Getting back to, to, yeah. to, to where I was, um, where I was going. Yeah. Um, from my, my in my previous uh, Adobe live stream, I, I explored a little bit of about uh, stylized characters and how I approach yeah. the the designing of characters um, when having a specific uh, visual language in mind. And um, in that session, I focused only in in a, in a black and white illustration, and uh, in that approach what i wanted to highlight was the contrast between the line expressiveness uh the balance between having lines and volumes and texturizations yeah. working with a more like uh, simplified um graphic approach 
Yeah. And um, today I thought it would be more interesting to build a little bit on that and yeah. talk about how I would explore working with with color. So still in the line of stylization and understanding and exploring uh, different visual languages, but this time seeing the importance that color uh, plays when you're building yeah. that visual language. So that's absolutely. Right. Well, let's get into it. What I'm planning it. to show you today. Yeah. <laughs> That's re let's do it because uh, people are excited to see it. Mm -hmm. uh, people enjoying being relaxed uh, today, which is very nice. You know, we call this hump day, don't we, Wednesday? <laughs> um, but, you know, it's just, let's just chill out for five minutes. So, no, that's great. And, of course, people can check out your Behance, which I was looking mm -hmm. at earlier. You've got some lovely, lovely work on there. Mm, thank and, um, you. Tim will drop that into the chat for us. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm afraid to say, uh, mostly because of what I've said earlier, that I, I've been juggling uh, quite some different things lately. Mm. I haven't had my Behance profile as updated as it should be, mm. uh, which is not fine, not cool. Uh, and well, I have I have a plan in motion to have that taken care of yep. um, soon this year. So, but but still, thank you for for visiting my profile and any feedback is appreciated. And please do uh, send your comments in the chat chat and any questions you you have, I'll be delighted to answer. That would be awesome. Absolutely right. We can get yeah. right. So I, what I really liked in some of your work, you know, is there's definitely a hint of a kind of a Cuba style in there somewhere. You've got and, and there's specifically yeah. one with some packaging work. I saw that is definitely cuba style love it absolutely love it <laughs> thank you mm. well thank you thank you thank you so much it's deeply appreciated uh tony um well i will just jump right back uh, into, into what i wanted to to show you and since I, I was talking about working with visual languages and different ones and exploring color and how color uh, behaves uh, in in different visual languages i have a selection of works from my portfolio that i wanted to show you mm. while i highlight what i what I think about when I'm when I'm trying to, to to build these these images, and so you will see that I have kind of like two main groups of um, of images here. One where uh, you have kind of um, a gradient um, a gradient of let me see. I'm searching for the the good term here. Um, I'll start from from another point uh, from okay. another perspective. I always work when I'm working with color from kind of limited color palette okay uh, it's one of the things that i learned while uh developing my my illustration work because mm. that uh using all the colors available in the spectrum is not always the the right approach no. because if you use a more limited palette it does help to build uh, a more uh, cohesive harmony in in any given image and what Absolutely. i was what i went what i meant about the the gradient is is that it's I don't I don't I have several degrees in which that uh, limited palette is applied because I have limited palettes of just kind of like two base colors, three yep. base colors, four or five. So it can extend um, a bit more to 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 fulfill the project's needs. And so yep. let's do something from from I'll show you something from, from so, the, the more. Don't worry yeah, about yeah. losing the words uh, there, Raquel, because right, your native tongue is Portuguese, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, You're doing is. this in English. Mm -hmm. If it was rever if the situations were reversed and you were hosting <laughs> me on a Portuguese live stream, <laughs> trust me, gradient wouldn't be the only word I'd be searching for. <laughs> well, so Tony challenge accepted. If, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> if, <laughs> if you want to do a live on another live stream in Portuguese. Yeah. I will totally be your host. <laughs> okay, right. Well, it's going to run out really, really quickly with Bondia. <laughs> no, okay. But thank you so much. Um, yeah. it, it really helps that, uh, that you're also understanding. But well, so showing you the work that I'm bringing you that I'm bringing you here today. The first, yeah. the first example is from a sequential narratives, like from a, a short comic story that I illustrated. Um, the lettering is in is in Portuguese, uh, and, and I'm sorry for that because, well, don't be sorry I, for that. It's yeah, fine. it's, it's, it's in Portuguese. Yep, absolutely. But um, this is the example of the first page of this uh, short comic, and this is one example where. I wanted to use color straight away to um, set the tone and set the mood. So yeah. this is why color is such an important, it's like a, such a key aspect when 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 
when it's integrated in a visual language, because mm -hmm. it does immediately communicate to anyone seeing the images. And it, it does establish what kind of tone, what kind of mood. It helps convey emotion. It does help um, to, to establish contrast and hierarchy within, within the image. And for this kind of example, I, I'm using a really, really limited palette with just two base colors, with kind of the blues and the sort of magenta, then working with several shades of, this, of these colors. And I, I have uh, a few close-ups of some of the panels in, the, in this page, so mm. you can see. And what I'm working here is not to have bold contrasts, not, not to have one element really pop out of the image, but have this kind of blended in space where you can feel a certain mood and a certain atmosphere where you can get a sense of time of day and and uh, because of the colors that i've chose there's a certain kind of melancholy uh, in the yeah in the air so that was a, that's what i was going for when using this kind of um color palette really limited one now i kind of i think i recognize the characters in here are they from um your separation um series is this the the fresco not the oh. application fresco the the word <laughs> uh, <laughs> no i i'm showing that illustration it, it's here in my selection to oh, okay. show you later it's not from there but it, it's interesting that you that you mentioned that because they are kind of like variations on a, on a character stylization that i like to do mm. so the, the the final treatment the rendering and the polishing of the of the of the drawings are kind of different because this one has uh line work the the, the black inking yeah. lines that are visible and then the color is with a super smooth demure palette with really limited colors and yeah. the other one is much more energetic with bold colors no no contours no lines just mm. straight up painting but the approach that I do to to characters and how I draw them is is sort of similar. So that, yeah. that's the the reason why you have ah. that similarity. But I will show that image in just a little sure. bit, so we can we can compare. And well, following the, this this example, uh, I'd like to show you just a, few, a couple of images from, oh, cool. from an older project. <laughs> um, this uh, this is um, this is for for um, a series of posters that I that I illustrated and designed for an independent music festival here in Portugal, um, one of the oldest ones here. And the, the the thing that's that's interesting about this festival is that they have uh, multiple sessions throughout many cities uh, in Portugal, and I had to illustrate a different poster for each city. So the brief for these illustrations was that I had to sort of. Uh, hint at uh, elements that you could recognize from the city. For example, this is from uh, a Portuguese city called Aveiro, which is, well, we, we like to call it the Portuguese Venice, although it's <laughs> it, it's got almost nothing to do with Venice, except from the part that it does have a it's canal. Water. And and yeah, <laughs> there's a canal and boats uh, go up and down. It's a lovely, lovely, beautiful city, by the way, just not, not in the same scale. Okay. And uh, in this in this case, um, there are some similar approaches to color because I still have a very limited color palette based on mainly two base colors that you'll see that I'm working to create um, a, more like a clear separation from characters in the foreground and the elements in, in the background. So I tend to use um, one one set of um, color shading color shades in in the foreground and another one in the background yeah. but then the different element is that i have a third like accent color that's really bold and saturated and energetic because the brief for these illustrations what was that uh they were supposed to have this kind of like unexpected uh, more eccentric element about them something that yeah. it would really stand out and, and and made you think wow this this is sort of weird and so you have this guy just uh balancing himself on top of a of a, of a canal pole and as one just, does as yep. one does listening yep. to music and just looking at his pet electric eel who shoots lasers out of its eyes <laughs> <laughs> so um there's this contrast between the limited demure palette and the the, the boldness of the of the accent color. Um, in in this case, there's always the 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 um, there's also the, the the treatment with the with the line work that that um, 
it, it, it really makes a difference whether you're coloring with, uh, with having line work on, yeah. a, on a, on a, like a separate layer or not, because, mm -hmm. uh, you can have a much more, um, like, uh, blocky approach to painting. You can, you can play paint in blocks that yeah. are just going to fill the spaces in, in, uh, inside the inking so it doesn't happen quite the same when you when you're just using painting with no lines and i'll show you that in in just a little bit so another example for the city of braganza which has this type of cool characters for for um, for carnival um and the same type of approach two base colors trying to um, distinguish and separate characters from background and one accent color just to give you like a clear focal point where I want to draw your attention and I want to draw your attention to the element that stands out because it's it's different and it's eccentric and, and unexpected. Yep. So this is the the image that you were referring to, Tony, yes. right? So yes. The... This was kind of a cover for a, a story that was that was you know that was emerging that you, you were you were putting together. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, uh, just to explain a little bit, this this is um, uh, um, a logo illustration um, that I that I designed and, and illustrated for a Portuguese podcast called in Portuguese Parados de Fresco, which which in English means just freshly separated because yeah. it's about uh, couples that are just recently separated or divorced. And it's a really humorous and funny podcast. Um, it was one of the most successful ones in Portugal last year. Um, and th these two, they, they are not, they were not married to each other and not separated from each other, but they were exploring and, and sharing their own experiences. Ah. Uh, and and so, so it's... Um, David Cristina is one of uh, the most well-known uh, stand-up comedians in Portugal, and Ana Garcia Martins is, well, the most well-known influencer uh, in Portugal. Okay. So, uh, I, I had this this brief to to create an illustrated logo for for their podcast, and. I knew that I wanted to do this type of stylization with the characters, with the uh, with the long necks and playing a, a bit with the with the proportions, like I did in the previous examples. Um, but I did want it to have some some points of of connection to what their facial expressions are and what this, their style really is. And one thing about um, this illustration is that I really felt that it needed. Um, a punch of energy uh, and and I convey that through through color so I can in my sketch draw characters in the exact same way and the way that I will um, finish them and render them with color will make a huge difference so this this was the the, the approach that I followed to have them uh, feel really energetic really exciting and the, the 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 heart in the background is this really bold red because it's where I I want to help. It, it does help um, establish where I want your your focal point to be with, yeah. because it, it frames the, the the characters' faces, yeah. um, and it does really stand out when it's uh, just a, a miniature in 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 Spotify's podcast list. So uh, it helps with that type of uh, visual communication. The color also is it's perfectly linked between the shadows especially on the man's neck mm -hmm. led into that from the background color of the heart and also then into the lipstick and the deep shadow on the woman's face as well it's super connected i love it yeah thank you thank you tony i appreciate it because um yeah indeed that's always what i what i'm trying to to, to achieve when working with colors and mm -hmm. that's why i i specifically refer the the, the limited color palettes because if you have a really wide range of options, um, it does uh, it, it it does make you liable to having things go all over the place if mm -hmm. you're not really careful in, in controlling the process. So when you have a limited palette, you know that it's it's like a puzzle with very few pieces, and you always have to make sure they they are working together and fitting yeah. together. And so. It does help me because it narrows the, the the field in which I have to to go to make decisions. Because the first thing that I knew was that I, I needed to have this really bright red uh, heart in the background when I yep. when I sketched it. So that's what establishes the hierarchy then in the image because I know that I have to have um, contrasts that 
that will make sense. And then the, all the, the, the familiar colors that derive from that red will have to be kind of in the same hue. Yeah. So it's, it's important to think about that. It works really well, really well. Thank you. Yep. By the way, people in the mm -hmm. chat, absolutely loving your work. Mm -hmm. Lots of lovely things said about your work um, in some of the earlier stuff <clears throat> that we were looking at, one of the first examples you showed us. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, with the couple in, um, Sean saying, wow, the texture. Um, yeah, the, you, you mean the, the first? <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Yeah, this one. So um, I'm such a, so somewhat how, which I think uh, is Portuguese name, I think. Um, it's such a fan, Raquel, keep up the awesomeness um, and, uh, and proud uh, just there. Oh, I, I didn't quite catch the name. Maybe how is it? How J A O A? Let's have a quick look. I think it's how. If I'm if mispronouncing it, your name, <laughs> if it's if it starts with a J, yeah. I will say João. Maybe Ah, João. Okay, it's, it's not a very easy name for for an English speaker. But yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Apologies, oh. is João or <laughs> so? My my bad. <laughs> Oh, but thank you, thank you so much, yeah. guys. It's it's yeah. really good to have your your feedback and yeah. and uh, and support because I, I said this previously in 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 my first uh, live stream, but I I will never get tired, and also I will say it again. This is such an amazing opportunity for for everyone to to share experiences and knowledge, and and everyone just learn together mm. because Absolutely. I. I keep learning so much, not just from hearing other professionals talk about their work, but also in sessions like these, everyone, when in sharing their thoughts about something, um, it always enriches the the conversation. So yeah. I really appreciate it when, when people participate in the chat. So thank you. Yeah, no, um, yeah. and well, I, since we came back to this image, I can just say that in this case, uh, uh, when since I was having this really limited color palette to set the mood, the texture is also part of setting that mood because I wanted this kind of like gritty um, feeling, you know, it's, it's yeah. kind of rough. So it's not really clean and polished and, and that helps with the, with the, with the storytelling. Um, in this case, of course not. It, the, I I like to have like clean shapes and and uh, really really not not one hundred percent hard edges on the shading, but really clear defined areas of of shading and, and volumes. So it's um, it's all about how the image is going to be seen. And most of the times, uh, uh, a podcast logo will be seen in in a miniature size, so it, it really has to pop out in the in the in the screen. And so these are. Uh, the kind of like three variations from one um, umbrella of a visual language. Yeah. And then I have something completely different, which is when I uh, go into my my children's illustration work. Yes, um, all. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, well, I, I bring you an example of, uh, of an, a book that I illustrated in late uh, 2020. Uh, they came out in, in late 2020 and I'm, I'm really fond of it because um, it's a really beautiful, beautiful story. And the book has been getting some amazing feedback because it was uh, selected for the White Ravens catalog for the International Youth Library in Munich. Wow. Um, yeah, it's, it's really cool that myself, the, the, the author and, and the editor, we're all <laughs> over the moon by this. And um, these, the illustrations for this book have been shortlisted in, in kind of like two awards, the Bologna Children's Books Fair Illustration uh, Contest and also the, the, um, the High Illustration um, Contest for International from China. Um, and so I'm really happy to show you uh, some examples because in this case, I work uh, with color just like I'm painting. Either I'm whether I'm painting in, on paper using uh, inks and, and gouache and, and, and coloring pencils, or I'm using my my iPad and, and the, the drawing apps. The approach is the same: is I will not have any inking. I will just start painting and layering things as I would do on on, on paper, and working with also a limited color palette, but of course with a bit of, of a wider range because I yeah. will have greens and blues and reds and yellows, but I fixed like a, like a percentage of saturation that I want to allow these colors to have and the percentage of, of brightness. And I'm, I, I start from a base palette of five or six colors. And then what I do is just, I just color pick them and then modify um, 
modify the the, the hue just a little bit yep. or the or the, the the brightness a little bit. <clears throat> And um, these are a few examples from 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 that book, and you'll see that it's it's a loser style of illustration because I I purposely leave the marks of the the the, the pencil and the textures of the of the paints. Love it. Yeah, <laughs> it's <laughs> so charming, so charming. Thank you so much, Tony. I really appreciate it. And another kind of example uh, a more minimalistic um, uh, approach with really really simple elements this was uh, was done in collaboration with a uh, with cosmetics brand clarin and for for a special christmas um charity campaign that they were they were running and i have here just a few close-ups of the of the scenes that i that i drew inside that little house and you'll see that shapes are really, really simplified. And you can also see the, the importance of that limited color palette and the fact that I, I wanted to have just really smooth colors like pastel tones in this case, not much energy, but just going for a little really cute and, uh, and soft approach because that yeah. was the brief that was what that was asking me. And uh, well, maybe just to, to finalize, just just one one more example. Uh, in, the in one in the line. pan is worth two in the ocean, in the, is it? In 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 the in the pond, I think the, the expression yeah. is it. So this is uh, an illustration based on that on that fable from from La Fontaine, and uh, I wanted to 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 use the color to really make the 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 only uh, character the main character pop out and then in the background uh just have like the the little the little fish is pleading for its life and so that that sketched blue part in the background is just like the fish making his arguments why no don't fish me out of the pond don't eat me i'm so small um and color does does help with that it's so <laughs> Well, thank you so much for 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 burying me with me. I didn't um, intend to to to, no, this to is, go so long about this, but I think it it's good. It, it's fascinating. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating, good. and people are loving it. I mean, especially the last few that you've shown, by the way, in the mm -hmm. chat. There's lots lots of things in here. So uh, there's there was some in here that said, I think we are. Uh, it was Linda was saying, oh, I think we immediately want to know more about the characters. And I think that's a good sign when you've nailed something like that, that you can tell immediately there's a story around it and you want to know what that story is, especially in children's uh, books and illustrated books. So, yeah, yeah no, exactly. It, yeah. And love the fisherman. Fantastic stuff, Raquel. <laughs> so, yeah, no, really enjoying Thank it. You. So, no, please don't apologize for that. It's just great. To, this is this is great stuff to see, you know really good no thank you thank you so much guys and yeah um i do feel it's it's important because i know it would be fun if i just started out drawing and sketching and painting from the beginning and i could still talk about the same things but i think it's nice to have this opportunity to explain where things come from and considering that we uh, there's there's always opportunities to 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 show people uh, what I do when I'm when I'm drawing and sketching because I can I can do my own Behance live stream uh, whenever I want to just yep. showing people uh, what I'm doing when I'm sketching when I'm painting and I think it's really interesting to to take the make the most of these of these sessions yeah. to talk a little bit more about the the process and and how we can. Uh, think about things and uh, um, in, a, in a more informed way, make the best decisions that fit the, the goals of any given project. So yeah. it's, uh, it's really great to have this conversation with you guys. And, and I'm happy to, to be here uh, sharing, sharing my thought process. No, it's lovely stuff. Okay. So, but now I think I'm ready to show you live what, a, what, a, what I, what I could um how I usually approach um, um, any of these two kind of uh, illustrations when I'm when I'm working. So I will mm. hop on to Fresco. Okay. Um, that I've been exploring more uh, recently this year, and uh, I'm super excited because it's uh, it's such an amazing tool. And since since I'm 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 mostly working on my 
on my iPad for my illustration work lately, it's really, really good to have to have an app like Fresco. And, uh, and I know that I, I still haven't explore, explored it to the to its fully to its full potential, but I will get there. Um, so I hope everyone gives it a try when they get the chance. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm wondering, uh, I'm curious to know mm -hmm. if, uh, if you've discovered or used I mean, if you're all doing your ink work and then laying down block colors, if you've mm -hmm. uh, if you've used the new reference layers feature, yeah, have you come across that? I have come across that, <laughs> and I have tried them. Um, uh, I have to say that it, it hasn't clicked with me totally yet. Right. Maybe I haven't explored it enough, and I'm not really realizing how to get the most of it uh, because. What I do, and I and I, I did happen to show a little bit of that when I when I was doing my my demo for the previous section yep. session is ah. oh I, I can I can show you something I if I have an inked drawing I can easily just go with the the lasso tool and create a, a selection and then use the paint bucket yep. to fill it fill it. Yep. Um, Probably it does require a bit more of exploration on my part to see if uh, the reference layer can help me save up some time because, of course, going with a lasso through more complex shapes, it does take time. So I think I will need to practice that. Yeah, a give it a bit. go. Yeah. Yeah. So let's see. Um, I will start maybe uh, with a with a little demo with a maybe like a, a character, a little character illustration based on that style that I that I was showing uh, uh, just now in my in my children's illustration work yeah. and okay I had some ideas so I'm using I use almost exclusively Kyle Webster's brushes from <laughs> from the creative cloud so you'll see that I, I will start sketching with my favorite brush which, which is the the animator pencil and so let's let's get to it let's just see and please uh, do I'm, I'm sorry if uh, in in any given moment i just end up being a little bit more silent but that's because sometimes when i dive oh no if you're zone, good, that's fine i can mm -hmm. i can <clears throat> i can provide all the noise you want <laughs> unfortunately for everybody watching <laughs> we could have another calming moment if you want while we're drawing so while we're <laughs> <laughs> we're gently watching Raquel draw a character using the <laughs> animator's pencil from Carl's brushes. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So uh, you could subscribe to mine and Tim's new app called Music and Typing for Relaxation. <laughs> but yes. No, it's, do you know that uh, that music, Tim, actually mm -hmm. does work. And the great thing is, Tim in the background, Tim in my ear, is um, not actually pulling that from any audio track he's just got an array of keyboards around him and he'll just be playing that it's so good we are yeah so and i would like to take this chance to 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 say hi to tim he was my amazing host in the in the, in the first session and um hello uh, it's really <laughs> Oh, hello, Tim. From, Ooh, it's the, it's from the, the from the the beyond. The disembodied voice. <laughs> the disembodied of, of Tim. voice of Tim. I, I, I did. I couldn't help but think, you know, when we were looking at the um, the Portuguese Venice uh, picture mm -hmm. with the man stood on the pole with the electric eel. Yeah. I thought how much that looks like Tim wearing one of my sweatshirts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I didn't I hadn't met Tim at the time but yep. who knows for foreshadowing <laughs> yeah I'll tell you what we are super lucky to have uh Tim on our team because he is mega mega talented in his own right you know what he does he's really excellent a brilliant asset exactly. and I don't think these would be as good as they are without him just I'm sure that our our friends across the Atlantic are very envious of the fact that we have <laughs> we have Tim. Yeah, of course, I'm sure. Yep. So, what I want to do is just maybe 
you, you'll see that, I, that since I'm sketching from the beginning, uh, yeah. from, from scratch, um, it does take a little bit of time to figure out uh, the, the the pose and the in the proportions i want i know that i, I want to have kind of like a, a, a dy dynamic scene where mm. characters in motion so there's this kind of like um line of um of, oh i i'm missing the term again um a line of action a line of action a exactly. line of action yeah, absolutely yeah, exactly. what i really like about working this way is it's much more organic the way it should be rather than being formulaic you know which is what a lot of people yeah. fall a trap of they draw ahead and think okay well that needs to be mm -hmm. many heads high now and, and working out those things rather than doing what you're doing which is going along with the yeah. line and forming it organically yeah because now i um what i what i what i would be thinking uh before the the color phase of the of the process is okay now i can fine tune the sketch a little bit and i can figure out okay maybe the head can be a bit bigger and if i want the character to be to be like a a, a small child and want it to be really really cute it does have to have a really large head and a smaller uh smaller body so i might i might work a little bit with that so i will go to this so as you're drawing, if I, if, I mm -hmm. if you don't mind me asking you a few questions, as no, we're... not at all. So I I kind of get a hint in in your comic illustration. Mm -hmm. That for me, there's a hint of it looks like somebody who's studied Will Eisner for a bit. Have you uh, have you studied Will Eisner's work? Not uh, in 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 depth. I can not say yeah. that I'm a really really uh, big connoisseur, yeah. but I do like. Uh, comics. I started um, enjoying comics as a reader, mm. and when I when I because I love to read comics, and when I th started thinking about uh, doing comics myself, um, yeah, yeah, I I do need to to study a little bit. So mm. yeah, I've, I've I'm familiar with Will Eisner's work, and I've studied it a little bit, and yeah. I, I can I do see my an best. influence there. That it's not like it's you know you your style mm -hmm. is your style, but I. I just feel an influence there when I was looking at it. I was, and, and I'm a big fan of, of you know, so it's. Uh... Thank you. It's uh, it's good to know. We, we, we always have um, some way to, in, we always incorporate our references in our work. Even if it's, even if it's not something that we are really aware of, mm -hmm. uh, but, but it does happen and, and it's, it's fine, I guess, because we're not creating anything absolutely new. I should say so, um, but yeah, I do. I do tend to to study the the masters um, of the trade. I'm sure that in the future, Raquel, people will study <laughs> your work, and oh. you know, it'll be, so you know. You're being too kind. No, 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 no. You're mm -hmm. you. You it's know, happening. justifiable. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you for the vote of confidence. I will do my best to live up to the expectations. <laughs> it's all good. So. Uh, so Andre in the chat is saying a full length mm -hmm. comic from Raquel and Nuno would be awesome. Oh, hello, Andre. Andre, is a, if, if I'm not mistaken, I'm, I'm not seeing the chat, but he's a friend and also a comics uh, author and illustrator. And oh. uh, he's a really big supporter of my work. So I'm really excited to have him here in the chat. So hi, Andre. Oh. Thanks for, yep. for being here. <laughs> Andre Satano, I, if I, hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Hey, Tano. <laughs> oh, okay. It's a hard, the, the, the C is read like a hard, K, oh, like a K. Okay. In uh, okay. <laughs> uh, well, apologies there, Andre, but I'll, I'll get it right next time. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, I don't don't think I'm going to be doing much more. I will just probably see. If yeah, and sense. earlier earlier from uh, that looks like uh, Ilya um, Susa. Mm -hmm. Uh, the choice of color is the best. I am very exciting about your work. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I think now we we have some of my my students online as well. I recognize uh -huh. the the names, so I'm happy uh, to have them 
to have them here. Mm-hmm. It's always good to to know they're 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 also interested in in my work uh, apart from what we do at school. So really good. Okay, so I don't think I will be detailing the the, the sketch much more because I can go straight to painting. So this is one of the the things that I that I would say about this sort of um, illustration style is that yeah. since it's really painterly and sketchy and I really like to build on on the um, the evidence of the of the lines and the 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 paint daubs and everything so I could work and tighten the ste- the sketch more of course I could but yeah. I will probably just do that uh, with with painting so from now what I will be doing is setting this layer maybe to multiply and bringing down the opacity and I will have another layer for color just underneath it so yes okay so taking advantage of fresco's um feature of the the favorites the favorite brushes I have here a few of my my favorites although uh I would like to have uh, the ability to to really organize my own folders of brushes. So yeah. <laughs> if you're listening at Adobe, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, and and well, they do. That that's uh, I'm joking, but uh, Adobe has been uh, amazing in the development of these tools because they really do listen to the feedback of users, and and I think they Absolutely. really do try to to meet them uh, in time. So I'm sure it will be just a matter of time before we can uh, we can have that. So. Uh, at the moment, I'm just going a little bit like back and forth and trying to find. Okay, let's let's try with with this one, and I will work on this layer, uh, trying to build on kind of like a, a flesh hue for the for the skin. And imagine it, my my process for this for for using apps such as uh, Fresco for for creating digital illustrations in this style is that I do like to uh, mimic the approach that I would have and I would follow if I was using paints and pencils and, and, and paper. So uh, I would start with a with a layer of gouache or, or illustration and then just start building on that with um, with other tools for, for, for texture. And it, it, it doesn't matter if, uh, if things are not really, really tight because that's the beauty of not having the the the, the line art and the, and the inking you don't have to keep inside the yeah the lines so i will have this more uh textured approach and let's see now for the hair different hue and um do you know even though i have I, you know like most people i know the color wheel in mm-hmm. most people in our business, I still keep one by the side of my desk. I have one just here, this small one. Mm-hmm. I've got a large one over on one of the drawing boards over there and another one in another one of my studios. But I still keep it because it's just handy to have that little yeah. reminder. Yeah. Th- this particular one, the one that I'm using here, has has some really nice tonal stuff on the back as well. So it's kind of... Oh, it's really, really cool. Super good. Yeah. That's that's a shame. I I haven't had. I must confess, I haven't had a, a proper color wheel, uh, at least like a, a physical paper one, and uh, for for a really long time, yeah. and it's really really useful. I've got another one here, which is this is this is mm-hmm. this one. The this Arky one is incredibly complex. <laughs> this one's got gaps everywhere. It's just got <laughs> this complete. Oh. Type. It's it's just bonkers. There's, you have to do a little course in order to in order to be able to use yeah. it. But fortunately, that comes on the back of the packaging um, for it. But no, that's still handy to have. I just think it's it's always good to have the reminders. And, and of course, in in the color picker in Fresco, you've kind of got a digital one there. So mm-hmm. yeah, I have, which is um, which is super helpful. Yeah. Okay, let's see. For example, uh, you, you, I'm, I'm showing the the color wheel here in the in the in the setting that I like to use, yeah. uh, which is um, having having the 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 hue 
uh, circle yeah. around the, the um, brightness square. and yeah, and, the brightness yeah. and, and saturation. saturation. Yeah, yeah. This because it's just a, a. I think it's a matter of habit. It it it's not because of it, if it's better uh, or anything. It's just the way that I that I like mm. to have it and. Uh, I, I haven't really started building my kind of like a swatch collection here in Fresco, but mm -hmm. what I do, uh, um, the more I, I, I'm using a, an app to, to work, so I'll, I'll get there eventually, is that I will start uh, when I when I get to a certain um, point where I've chosen the, the, the base colors that are really important to any project, I will start just like mm -hmm. saving and building my, the, the swatches because I know that if I want to change something a little bit, it will just be a matter of building from from that changing the saturation changing the brightness a little bit but at least the the, the base colors will be mm. will be set so um, do you know while we're um while we're on that mm -hmm. that topic of color and, and while we're doing feature requests so i'm actually going to send a link to this live stream to my friends at adobe drawing after afterwards um while we're on feature requests if, if anybody from adobe drawing is watching it can we please have uh, a color can we have a choice of color wheels so we can have the digital color wheel but also the artist color wheel, yeah, because the digital yeah. one, you know, has cyan as being the opposite of red, which it is in terms of in in terms of the digital spectrum. Mm -hmm. But it should be green, so you should have a slightly wider space for the yellows. And you know, I just exactly. like to be able to choose. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if you're with me on that, Raquel, but you know, so uh, but that that's my. Yeah, That's my I, two I would. Cents. I would certainly like the the opportunity to have. Uh, I would like to have the choice. So. Yeah. Okay. So what I what I'm doing now here in the in the side is that I'm uh, taking advantage and experimenting with a, a really cool functionality of um, of Fresco, which is uh, the ability to have kind of like a, a multicolor brush. Swatch. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So uh, since I'm I'm going for this painterly uh style it i think it's really helpful to work with that so um i it, it does it does re require a, a bit of trial and error to really get what colors work well together for the effect that you're going for mm. but it, it does save up time because you're painting with like a, a mixed um you have you save time uh, doing something that later before you would only be able to do with a mixer brush yeah paint two colors separately and then use yep. the mixer brush so now i'm just uh using the 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 touch so that i can i don't have select multicolor. So, oh, yeah yeah so i'm just going to place yeah here and hopefully what happened you can select my color so what happened I think it's doing it now. There you oh, go. Yeah. There you yeah. go. So just yeah, we'll we'll keep up with the same brush. Just try and make it a bit bigger. And so. Mm, gorgeous. It, it 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 helps to to not have things so stay so flat because yeah. even even if in the end i will cover it up a little bit and have um one color prevail over over the other but it's it's really nice to have uh, and i can even just go in now it's got texture this way and it's charming you know it's, yeah yeah exactly so um from here what i want to do is start working um, on the on her pouch and then on her back arm which should be hidden yeah and tim's yeah. saying in the chat that that's a there. great way to use multicolor samples thank you thank you tim okay so mm. And Aileen, 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 uh, sorry if I'm getting your name, if I'm mispronouncing your name. I seem to be on a run with the mispronunciation today. <laughs> um, saying, can we also have a brushes history, please? Yeah, that might not be a bad thing to have, but, you know. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'd like I, I would field. be. <laughs> I'd like a search field the same way you have in, uh, I know you can add your own favourites, but I mean, you've got quite a lot yeah. of favourites in your fresco. I have quite a lot of favourites in mine i kind of think just a little field at the top that you could tap a couple of letters into would be useful Mind you, I was saying that about photoshop for years before that 
you you can't imagine the 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 relief it was when Photoshop introduced that that ability to to search brushes. Uh, it saves up so much time, and yeah, it would be super helpful to have that in 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 Fresco as well. And hot off the press, Tim is telling me that Fresco has a brush history. Oh, Where? Uh, it? it's, it's in the, the, re it's recent, the recent at the top. Yeah, it yeah. It does. It does have a brush. So I'm sorry I didn't pick up on, on it before. Not I me either, kind though. Of, I was focused. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was focused on the illustration and I, I didn't understand that that's what was being said. But yeah, the history, it, it exists. Uh, it has a, a recent brush for each session. I think it, yeah. reset, it resets once you, you, you quit Fresco, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. But it's really helpful, for example, because for this session, I have a lot of favorites, like you said. And if I'm just using three or four brushes for this illustration, it might be helpful just to, to keep them here uh, in the in the in the recent uh, tab. So, yep. cool. Now, there you go. And there you go, Eileen or Aileen. Um, you come to Adobe Live here in the UK and your wishes are like granted while we're in the middle of the stream. <laughs> Boom. <There you> go. <laughs> Okay, so moving on to texture. I'm using one of my, my favorite um, brushes for this kind of crayon coloring pencil style here mm. from, from Kyle Webster once again, which is the, the, the charcoal pencil. Yeah. I think it, it's part of this uh, dry brush collection or maybe the 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 drawing the drawing box from the the mega pack maybe uh, annika by the way is chipping in uh, uh with it stays available for the file even after you've quit fresco oh for the file um, that's yes that's, for the file associated yeah. thing yeah i, so I, I knew that i knew that i didn't have the same recent brush history um when switching from one one project to another so i was unsure if it was a matter of resetting completely or just for the specific project it makes yeah. sense so oh, I'm getting there with the so skin cute. tone <laughs> <laughs> and I do try Sometimes I, I have to to remove the the sketch for for a little bit just to 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 make sure that when I'm when I'm doing important shapes like the the, the face that yeah. I, that at least I have that not leaving any blank spaces or anything. Mm. It's good. Okay, when I when i move on to to drawing her facial expressions then I, I will also work a little bit on on creating volume a little bit of shading in her face so for now just these mm -hmm. so what i'm one of the things that i'm more excited about also in fresco was this um the feature of erasing with uh, with any brush that you want because uh, I was really I was really uh, disappointed when I when I looked up the the brushes for the for the eraser and oh it's not not a big collection mm -hmm. but then you can just hit the 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 touch button and you can erase with the brush that you're there using you go. And, yep. and it's 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 an amazing feature because it means that you can it doesn't create any weird um, area that yeah. has a different texture from so from everything what you're else. Painting. Absolutely, you can do the same thing in Photoshop, of course. With yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Yeah, but uh, but in Fresco, I think it's more more recent, right? Yeah, uh, no, it goes back uh, no. a little way. That does quite a little okay. way. Um, but in Photoshop, you, there are two ways to do it. Uh, you mm -hmm. can, if your keyboard has a tilde key. Mm -hmm. You yeah. can press the tilde key and it switches to erase. Or if you don't have a tilde key, because some uh, keyboard layouts do not have uh, that key or mm -hmm. readily accessible, um, you can just set the blend mode to clear, um, which you can do by a shortcut, by the way, which is shift alt or shift mm -hmm. option R. There you go. 
throwing in a couple of Photoshop tips for you there for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's not even my stream. It's Raquel's. <laughs> but it's deeply appreciated because we're all here to to learn. So I'm I find it super helpful that you also also throw in some some tips of your own. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt, I think. But I'm just enjoy I feel like we should go to relaxing voice again, you know, because <laughs> just it's just something so nice about watching you work. All it needs is Tim to hit up that keyboard and I'm going full on calm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and just a few minutes before the session, we were preparing everything and listened to Tim typing on his keyboard, and it was super smooth, soothing, not smooth. I feel, I feel bad soothing. now because you know we we were so we were so busy laughing in the green room <laughs> about the relaxing chat that um, that yeah, I, I feel I feel like I threw you off your game a little bit to start off with. So I'm so so sorry. <laughs> if that was the case, I um, um you know, hey hey. It's cool. It's a, it, it was a really, really fun way to, to do the, the intro to the session. We had good times. It's good times. Yeah. Good start. Yeah. It's always good to, to, to laugh and, and uh, have that <clears throat> playful, oh, my, oh. playful attitude. So honestly, because you know, it's uh, there's so much in the world you could look at and be disheartened. I think yeah, it's important exactly. to have, you know, to keep hold of the things that make you smile, mm -hmm. you know, and just exactly. keep, Precisely. yeah. And a bit of a chuckle doesn't, doesn't really hurt. I mean, all right. I suppose if you're a brain surgeon, yeah, <laughs> then it probably does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but fortunately we're not. Yeah, so, we don't have to uh, to worry about that. Yeah. We're not playing with people's lives. So yeah. there are certain circumstances <laughs> where where having a chuckle is perhaps not appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> but here in our creative world, it doesn't hurt at all, as long as it's within the wider context of what you're doing. Of course. <laughs> yes. Let's have a quick time check here. So uh, mm -hmm. we're doing pretty good. We've got just over uh, half an hour left. Uh, oh, oh, this so, is but flying I, I'm, past. It's flying. It's flying. Yeah. I'm not sure if I, if I will be able to do a second uh, demo, but we'll see. I'll try to just... We, we are happy to get what we get with you, Raquel. It's really mm -hmm. good. Really good. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll give, I'll give me a chance to mention actually things that we've got coming up next week. Mm -hmm. Uh, for our audience so uh, on monday we've got charles carter back with us uh he's not been on for a while yet so that's uh, that's pretty good on tuesday we've got uh, david glissman who will be doing a 3d scene in either dimension or stasia whichever he's got installed at the time and then on wednesday um there's gavin campbell is back doing some drawing with uh, some guy called tony Homer, Hamer, <laughs> Tony, H oh, Tony Harmer, uh, yeah, who will also be drawing. They'll be drawing side by side again oh, um, cool. next week with an interstellar theme. Do, do, do. So, yes, plenty to look forward to next week. Yeah, uh, I love that uh, <laughs> the premieres, uh, premieres <laughs> auto subtitling changes my name to Tony Homer. <laughs> <laughs> And Tim's just put that in the chat. It's very funny. You you leaned into it. <laughs> I, I did, absolutely. Go with it. <laughs> <laughs> Gareth Williams is saying Tony Hart. Yes. <laughs> now, Raquel, you're not, you, you won't understand that reference, but there used to be an artist called Tony Hart who wanted to make art accessible to kids and, he, and to everybody. And he mm -hmm. had this fabulous program that originally was called Vision On. Um, and then just became Tony Hart, uh, and he he tried he went across the whole gamut of media of physical media, making things and encouraging people mm -hmm. to create beautiful, beautiful stuff. And Tony Schwammer, Tony Schwammer, that's a bit Sean Connery, uh, Steve. <laughs> that is. 
Oh, hello, Mr. Uh, Schwab. <laughs> That's really cool. There we go. This so is I'm so just, lovely. I'm doing just a little bit of uh, shading here. Yep. And one thing that I um, that I liked ab about this um, this style of painting um, is that it, I I can keep it really loose and not have fine details because it 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 adds to the expressiveness of the um, of the drawing and the, and the vis visual language and it's something that that actually kind of helps me in my in my own work process because um i noticed when i was starting out that i had this tendency to uh really try and over do and over detail things and not in a way that you're you you're supposed to do when you're doing a super rendered super complex detailed artwork but i would just go and zoom and zoom and zoom and really get worried about <laughs> having a nice clean outline and then yep. when you're seeing the illustration in this size it doesn't really matter at all it just mm -hmm. matters if you have uh strong overall outlines and and strong contrasts because we fill in the gaps you. yeah we fill in the gaps right we 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 create our brains create for us uh the rest of anything that needs to be there exactly so i can totally uh, see your work being animated at some point you know oh that's that's really really i was looking when you showed those things from the children's story mm -hmm. in there i thought oh man someone's got to pick this up and and get you animating oh i i would love that stuff. well unfortunately you'd have to direct a whole load of other people on how to do it but i mean you'd, you'd be drawing you'd be drawing the key stages but the uh but no they it's i can definitely see i can see that in your future oh thank you just, i would I'm i would love that yeah. i'm just consulting my uh, mm -hmm. metaphorical crystal ball okay oh yes there we go and it's it says yes it's oh really it says right. yes yeah it says yes that will happen <laughs> oh that's that's gonna, really encouraging i'm going to will thank it you. to happen <laughs> thank you thank you so much tony i appreciate I'm it using all of my powers right now it's, will it uh, into being? <laughs> it's 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 cool and and, and um, i would be excited about that of course because uh it's kind of like magic when when you're when you see your your characters and your drawings come to life right mm. <laughs> i just want you to every night now from now on until it actually happens to go to sleep think and and imagine yeah how you would feel if the following day your first animated short was coming out with your drawings i want you to visualize that in fact i'm going to do that in my in my calm voice okay. so what i'd like you to do raquel is I'd like you to imagine every night before you go to sleep what it would there feel it like if the following day your first animated short was coming out. Put yourself in the moment of how excited you'll be on the following day when that comes out and go to sleep knowing that tomorrow will be an awesome day for you. Your first animated short becoming a reality. And it all started right here on Adobe Live. <laughs> Challenge accepted once again. Yeah, I will totally do it. Visualize it every day. It will happen. Yeah, we're, we're joking, but but you're, you're absolutely spot on. Uh, I, I probably don't don't do as don't do it as much as I as I could and should. But visualizing things really do help us manifest them. Because, oh, there's been yeah. there have been so many studies on the power of visualization. I, I know that recently because of the winter, mm -hmm. the winter games. Of course, I can't use the O word uh, mm -hmm. here, yeah. right? But the winter games, and they talk about athletic performance. There was a study that was conducted. I think it was with basketball players recently, where they 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 separated some some basketball players into two um, two teams. And one team was training on taking these particular shots, right? They were doing that the whole time, whereas the mm -hmm. other team was just told to visualize it, to stand there and visualize it. Imagine that they were taking the Imagine shots. that they were taking that shot and imagining that the shot was successful. And both the people who had trained 
at performing that action and the people who visualized it, both sets improved. Yeah. So it just goes to show you, you know, there was no, that they were pretty much even, even, yeah, in that they both, both improved by around about the same amount. But it does show you that visualization really does work. Yeah, it does. It's, you know. uh, I think it's, it's something that, that's really, really common in like um, professional sports and in mm. such activities. And uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm learning and, and, and trying to, to lean into that habit that, yeah, maybe, maybe in the, in the, in the art world, world as well we can we can learn from it and mm. um, in in, and do well, it. in in any field yeah you can learn from it and absolutely and have it be a factor in your success yeah. right uh, oliver by the way is saying in the chat if i had my first animated short coming out the next day there's no way i'd be able to sleep trust me Oliver, if you've been working on an animated <laughs> short for a year, you would you certainly would <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you really would. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a, a really a really interesting insight Tony because yeah. I can imagine that there's there's this point where where your nerves and your stress get totally overwhelmed by just being absolutely yeah. crushed and you just, with yeah, you're yeah. tired. You need you yeah. need <laughs> you think it's done. It's done. There's nothing going to stop, you know, it will be received the way it will be received tomorrow, but it's yeah. done then sleepy sleepy bobos <laughs> and then the following day you might wake up a bit earlier you know you might because the excitement will kick in today's the day it's going to happen but mm -hmm. you know um dear in the chat by the way has noticed that i have uh the octopus of opinion over my shoulder uh, oh, just I've, here I've so we met we, him <laughs> yeah we ought to ask the octopus of, of opinion how he feels about your work and i'll tell you what at the moment he's he's feeling a little bit grumpy Oh, what's the matter? You couldn't see because oh. I was in the way. All right, okay. Oh. And now he's taking a look at your work. And oh, yeah, loving that, <laughs> loving it. Yes, it's really, really good. <laughs> I feel like a children's TV presenter all of a sudden. <laughs> I think you, yeah, you're you're finding some some hidden uh, hidden skills stuff. And, but, yeah, and other potential. things to add to my bucket list include <laughs> uh, children's TV presenter. Why not? Um, yeah no I'd, uh, no not for me I can, I can when I found out I can remember being about I don't know 10 11 12 something like that and finding out that they actually got paid for that as a job I was like what <laughs> <laughs> no, it's too, too, too bad because you you have the show half written right there at the Oxford absolutely of opinion <laughs> I know, but t Tim and I, are, Tim and I are work. So Tim and I have a thing called Film Club, which mm -hmm. we did a couple of times last year, and it's where we reimagine uh, titles of television programs and that sort of thing. Cool. Well, Phil, and it was popular. People liked it, and so it's coming. You know, it's, it did pretty well, and so we're bringing it back. It's just a huge volume of work to do, but we have it coming back very shortly, Raquel, and. Um, we're working on that at the moment so we're working on yeah. that then you know sideline we've got songs coming up for our our next album cover thing it's all going on it's very very busy and uh, i'm just thinking that i owe tim some more stuff so i better get that done <laughs> <laughs> but hey uh, stephen can see me as gordon t go for sidekick <laughs> cheers <laughs> that used to be a glove puppet that was uh, wielded by a guy called Philip Schofield, uh, who yesterday celebrated 40 years in the entertainment business. I am also celebrating that number of years this year in uh, oh. in my career, which is crazy. Well, congratulations will be in order soon, right? Yeah, <laughs> not too far away. So crazy. Feels like yesterday. Yeah, I can imagine that. Mm. Oh, Oliver used to have a Gordon, Gordon the Gopher. <laughs> as Tim says, as we all know, Tony's career started before he was born. But which career, Tim? <laughs> but which one? <laughs> of my 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 career has always been my career, mate. All my, my sidelines. This is so lovely, Raquel. 
Thank Look you. <laughs> I I hope you guys are are, are enjoying. Um, color work does usually take me a bit longer than than, um, than usual with uh, with just um, line work and black and white illustrations. Um, have you have you tried um what have you taken anything like this in fresco and tried segmenting it up into pieces and doing little animation little tiny animations mm -hmm. well not yet but uh but i would definitely like to explore the 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 animation feature yeah. in fresco because what what usually uh as, a, as an illustrator, I find more overwhelming about the idea of, of um, trying to animate my own drawings is that, mm. okay, I, I, I'm, I don't master the, the, the animation software and process completely. Mm. Uh, I do have some, some, some basic notions and skills. And the fact that uh, tools and apps like, like Fresco are giving you this, this really simple um, uh, framework in which you can just, okay, you don't have to know all about the the really complex animation process, mm. but these are the basics. And if you you learn the basics, you can just do do really really interesting work. And yeah. I haven't tried it yet in Fresco. Uh, no, well, not apart from just drawing a little circle and seeing if it and moves it along around. <laughs> yeah, along the path. Not with characters yet, but it's um it's of course a, a really great idea and one that I'm definitely going to to try anytime soon. My first animated content would have been in this. This would have been before you were even on the planet. So it would have been. Uh, I think it was. It was nineteen eighty nine. I think it. Was oh, a, I was on the planet. Were you? Then. Oh, cool. <laughs> well, the, I, had, um, I, I had finished elementary school by then. So. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> I, you surprised me. But there you go. The um, but uh, yeah, it was. A product called Dan Dog Ears that that didn't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, it was an actual physical product. I still have the shots uh, from it and some of the ads from it, but it didn't go anywhere. But I had to produce uh, animatics, yeah, mm -hmm. which I'd never done before, and I had to be talked through it by the studio that were doing the rostrum camera work and everything. And, and I, I looked at it thinking, oh, when I came away from there, I thought, oh man, this is going to be really really hard and it was to start off with but oh i was hooked loved it yeah i imagine that's what happens once you try it right mm. it's you might be scared uh, and overwhelmed a little bit at first but once you get the hang of it you'll just mm. um, be super excited right yep yes uh, stephen was starting university yeah cool You know, this could almost mm -hmm. be one of my daughters. This uh... really, yeah. Oh, it's cool. Yeah, <laughs> it could. I'm gonna, I'm gonna screenshot this in a bit. I'm gonna take a screenshot from the from the <laughs> replay, and I'm gonna show it to my wife when I get home, and just see if she shares. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Do you go to do you go to any uh, any conference? Do you go to Angoulême to the to well, the conference? I, conference? I haven't been to, to to Angoulême yet, sadly. Um, I I have gone to to I do go to sub here in Portugal. Uh -huh. um, there's this um, um, it's kind of like a small comics festival, but 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 a a really well known one here in Portugal and also uh, internationally, which is uh, Beja Comics Festival. Okay. It's uh, in the south of, uh, of Portugal. It's a small town, but the the just the mood that you have during the festival. It's so cool. Just authors and re and creators yeah, and yeah. readers and and editors and everyone just hanging around talking sharing their love for 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 comics and for for the visual arts and uh, yeah it's it's really i'll get the cool. details of I'll, I'll get uh i'll get the details of that i'll look into it do you go to anything like off do you go to off in barcelona not not yet uh, uh although um 
Andre, who is uh, the, my friend that I mentioned yeah. earlier. He's in Barcelona right now, and oh. he's, he's mentioned the intention of, of, of going. I'm not sure if, uh, if it will happen or not, but he's really uh, got my interest peaked. And I'll tell you what, what, uh, what event I, I have been to a couple of times and that it's uh, really interesting and it's appropriate to mention here because um, there's this kind of um, one of the largest uh, visual arts gathering of, of, of people around the world that happens in Portugal, in, in Troia, in the center of the, of the country, which is called Trojan Horse was a Unicorn. I'm not sure if you've heard of it. I have not, but that's, I'm you intrigued will have, now. You will I'm have intrigued. to look it up. And Trojan Horse was, uh, was a unicorn, unicorn started, yeah, started as um, uh, a small event a few years back here in Portugal, and now it's grown to a really big international event. And it's so important in, in the community building and in helping creators and companies and studios just really connect and, uh, well, help everyone grow uh, professionally. And yeah. what the reason I'm mentioning it uh, is because it was actually because of of uh, THU um, that I that I'm here at Adobe Live because mm. I met Julia Zieger. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. love the lovely Julia Zieger, who's also yep. a host here at Adobe Live. She is. And um, uh, she, we, we were we were talking, and uh, I, I found her really, really, really nice, and. Uh, um, we were we were discussing uh, what we do, and she was checking out my Behance profile. And then she said, "You know, I'm a host at Adobe Live, and, and you seem to have um, some some. Uh, it's it's easy for you to communicate in English. Would you ever be interested in showcasing a little bit of your work and doing a demo live, or do you not feel comfortable with that?" <laughs> I'm totally on board with that. Yeah, yeah, I'd love yeah. to do it. You're because... perfect for, for these. <laughs> I, I do so... remember now seeing that the, the recommendation came from Julia. It was in our we are in our backstage um, chat. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do remember so, that. Julia's yeah. in uh, in the US right now with yeah, Russell. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've seen uh, I've seen her. They, they're they're doing some some live streams from from over there, right? Mm. They are indeed with their digiversity.tv mm -hmm. uh, thing they're doing. If you get to off, one of my friends, uh, Marie Godas, Marie Go Marie Go Marie Go Godas has, mm -hmm. this is her book actually, just here. I think you two would get on like a house on fire. You've got a lot of similarity um, between the two of you. Oh, I think okay. there's, a, there's, a, there's a synergy there. You're different, very different in approach, but also there's there's something in between. So so do find her. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the tip. So. And Sandrine yeah. saying, I can clearly see Raquel as a host on a live. So much confidence on the screen. Ooh. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Sandrine, for the <laughs> the vote of confidence. I'm not sure, however, if being on the opposite opposite end of this uh, business that we're doing here <laughs> would work so well because Tim is an amazing host. Tony is an absolutely amazing host. Oh, thank you. You're, 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 you're a natural, right? You were born thank to you. do this. So uh, oh. for me, it's cool to, to be doing this, doing my own thing. And, and uh, when I get into the zone, yeah, I get confident about it and um, things go smoothly and, uh, and, I, and I, like, I love it. I love to do it, of course, but mm, presenting and hosting for someone else, it's a different thing altogether. It has its sure. moments. You can, I've, I've had a good week this week, to be honest, because uh, I had Shaheen yesterday uh, mm -hmm. who was doing some work uh, in Blender and Photoshop. That great, great work to look at. Good fun. Got you today and you're just wonderful. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it has its moments. Sometimes, you know, can be a little bit more challenging. So it's, uh, this is good. Everybody, everybody we've had on here has been lovely. Yeah. But sometimes people will come along and just, they won't speak to you while they're working. They'll just, <laughs> <laughs> they'll just be very quiet. And so you have to fill in the gaps, but that's the job of a host. Um, now I do, I do my best to not just leave you hanging hmm. and talking on your own. Tim says Tony's first words were, and we're live. <laughs> they were your first words, Tim. 
uh, Dia saying Adobe have fr very friendly audience and artists. We do. We have the best community here, hands down. Yeah, you guys and the people we have on, f we have great mm -hmm. people. Some of the people, um, Raquel, who visit us mm -hmm. on these sessions have come along to absolutely every session since Adobe Live started. Yeah. That's so cool. Almost without missing any you know i mean i'm i'm not i'm not around for every single one so i can't guarantee but you know we do see many of the same faces and people get welcomed in i saw yesterday in the chat somebody talking to someone else and saying well you're in the community now and that's nice that's mm -hmm. that's what we like we're all better together yeah totally and uh, i i've noticed that um there are some some recur recurring uh guests the people that are watching the live mm. streams and that's absolutely lovely and wonderful and um i wish i could do, could could do the same and because of work it's not always possible but mm. it's it's really it really helps to know that there's this strong sense of community and people supporting each other so mm. it's it's good to know that when we can we'll be there for for one another now, Sandrine is saying in the chat, you could do a drawing battle like Rachel and Karina. That could be a first step. Well, we're, we're not <laughs> we're not big on battles, right? Because they they kind of suggest that there should be an an outright winner. Yeah. Right? But I tell you what we do like, and Annika in the chat has taken part in one of these, and they're bigger on the US streams. Mm -hmm. Is a thing called draw this in your style. Yeah. Now I think some sessions maybe with you and Yulia. Or you and Karina, you know, might yeah. they might work really well. We uh, we have our host meeting this afternoon. Looking forward to seeing everybody. <laughs> the, uh, so <laughs> it might be worth a mention. But, uh, and Annika's saying there there definitely should be an Adobe Live UK. Draw this in your own style. So yeah, draw this in your style. Yeah, and Haley's uh, saying she mm -hmm. loves draw this in your style, and she's working on one right now. And don't forget, oh, cool. everybody, you can carry on this conversation. The conversation that you have here can carry on in our own Discord. We have our own Discord server. Just go along and visit there if you want to submit some of your work. If you've been, as I imagine you will have been, inspired by what Raquel is doing today, maybe have a go at doing something in this freer style yourself and pop <laughs> that onto discord so you know you can chat about it the great oh, thing there of course such yeah, a lovely, lovely idea thank mm. you <laughs> and then you know we can send those across uh, uh biola saying working on the one with annika and cody today so yeah cody bear so i think cody bear might have actually started the uh draw this in your style things i can't remember where it originated but i do think it was there but i think we should have something like that oh it's so. really interesting mm. cool, cool idea and uh, in these in this kind of draw draw this in your style sessions the, the, you're both dry, drawing drawing uh, at the same time live, yeah. right yeah so you've got kind of yeah, subjects seen, and you're working on yeah yeah i've seen i've seen a couple of them it's uh, it's nice because you you get to see uh, when two different artists working from the same theme, they will work on completely different things. And I, I don't just mean in terms of uh, the idea and the composition the composition that they come up with, but um, their own approach to whatever, color yeah. and line work and, and style and and whatever comes to your mind when you when you think of illustrating a, a certain theme, it will necessarily be different. So I... I I'm, I think it's really interesting to 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 see yeah. both no, of it's, those it's drawings good. coming up together. And I mean, sometimes it's it's just that the two people have a certain chemistry together, mm -hmm. and it is just like being somebody who's in their studio. And apparently, uh, Steve, by the way, is saying uh, it was Cody's invention. So top marks mm -hmm. on there, fantastic. But yeah, sometimes it's just that they get on so well. So we have Rachel Presky. Mm -hmm. uh here on quite often and she works with a range of different people and that's just because they're just nice people <laughs> <laughs> you know they're just lovely people they have nice chat you know yeah and do it 
But no, it's all good. And Umicorn's back in the chat. Umicorn disappeared and come back because she made a mistake with her schedule. So she doesn't have to leave. There you go. By the way, everyone, um, I'm just going to give a shout out to Maddie Belmore. You, Maddie was on a while ago. Uh, mm-hmm. Maddie Belmore, of course, is on on Wednesday afternoons. So if you've got a bit of extra time, so this is generally about an hour after I think we finish here. I can't remember now what time it is, but I do tune in once I've had my lunch and watch hers for a while. So yes. And just about five minutes left. So yeah, I'm just going to good. Yeah, just going to to add a little bit of uh, shading. It really helps to to convey the idea that the girl is just flying, <laughs> running around really quickly. So yeah, uh, the the whole idea of the draw mm-hmm. is in your own style. By the way, it's going down really well. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put that forward today. So we must That's have really... this. Of course, we have to be careful here. Oh, sorry. Go on. No, 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 no. I was, I was just going to say that uh, I have multiple challenges accepted today. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, this is all if... good. Push yourself. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. We, we do have to be careful, though, because we have to make sure that we include that we've got a lot of drawing heavy content at the moment, which is which is great. Mm-hmm. But we do have to think about the people who are photographers retouchers yeah you know animators motion graphics people we have to keep all of that and i just think that we need like two streams a day tim right now will be freaking out <laughs> <laughs> no 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 <laughs> tim we could have you hooked up to something you know so it'd be like the matrix so you don't need to worry about going to the shops or anything like that you could just <laughs> Nor eating, nor sleeping, everything no, 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 would just no. be just, taken just care upload, of. We just upload <laughs> Tim, <laughs> upload Tim to Creative Cloud and just. <laughs> so lovely. Okay. So this is the point where um, in, an, in any given illustration uh, in this kind of style, I could just keep going for another three hours or yeah. just stop it at this point because uh that's the thing with this um painterly approach to 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 the illustration is that uh, you don't need to have too much fine detail so mm. i could say that this is enough but of course if i wanted to i could experiment with a few options i could detail the hair a little bit i could uh, try and uh build a, a background of course which which, mm. it, which would be certainly um an important thing and essential one but since i spent so much time talking uh, and I didn't allow for much time for for painting. Uh, I'm sorry about that. But um, I think it's in- interesting that we had the opportunity to 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 have both thing both thing- things. Oh, I'm. <laughs> it's good. The, it's en- all... the English is fighting me today. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's um, it's nice to be able to 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 explore more and more. Um, a uh, wider conversation about the the thought process into how yeah. visual languages can work with color and then well doing a little demo at least on 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 one of them and uh, what i wanted to 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 show here is what i've been working on to to try and make the most of uh, what adobe fresco has to to mm. offer be it either the the amazing um, collection of brushes that for everyone who's been using the the Creative Cloud uh, on uh, on Photoshop or or, or other uh, programs for for a few years now, if you're used to to working with with Kyle Webster's brushes, it's a really smooth transition because you just import them straight into into Fresco, and that was a really a really yeah. uh, argument in favor for me. And then just all the other features that keep being added up to to well to help. Uh, foster your creativity, yeah. you know, because when you when you know you have uh, the tools available and and you know how to master the tools and you start to experiment with them, inevitably uh, your creativity will 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 broaden because you know I have more options uh, with which to 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 create something. So yeah, no, it's it's been wonderful watching you do this. So I'm just going to go through. Uh, actually, I'm just going to mm-hmm. make a quick comment, and then I'm just going to go through things. Uh, and 
Annika actually in the chat says she loves the stylistic shadows there. And do you know what I really love about your shadows? What? Is that you've managed to convey the movement of the character using the shadows. There's a dynamism that yeah. actually hits you, even though the posture and everything is a dynamic posture with a line of action. Mm hmm. You've actually got the rest of the movement in the shadows. That's super, super clever. I Thank you. Really, Thank you, Tommy. Really That's really, really, really helpful feedback, and, and uh, I really appreciate it because yeah, so good. it's um, yeah, it's what I, it's what I try to do. If um, when you when you make a decision in the beginning of of um, building an image, then you just try and make every other decision follow the same uh, direction. So yeah. happy to know that uh, that it's working for this. That's one. good. And everybody's loved it. Haley's saying, I love how it looks. I'll have to watch the replay. Emma's in the chat. Hope you're feeling a bit better today, uh, Emma. She's very happy to see you here uh, again, Raquel. And she says you are so talented. Uh, and we're going to be talking to Emma Aww. this afternoon about draw this in your own style. <laughs> Thank uh, you so, so much, Emma, and thank you so much for, for all your help and, and uh, for making this possible here for, yeah. for me with uh, with Adobe Live. Thank you. Yeah. No, fantastic. Everybody, don't forget, uh, so on Monday, uh, we'll be back with Charles Carter. On Tuesday, we'll be back with David Glissman doing some 3D stuff. And on Wednesday, Gavin Campbell with his beardy sidekick. Uh, Tony, whatever his last name was, can't remember. But for now, uh, go ahead, join us on our Discord server. Uh, you can always watch on replay. And uh, from myself and Raquel, uh, it's cheerio. Have a great rest of your week, everybody. And uh, see you soon. Take care. Bye. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>